How to assemble Stuart model boilers. Part 2, assembling the 504 type of boiler. I've already shown how to do this in my series, Building a Stuart Model Steam Plant. But owing to the customers sending me quite a lot of steam parts, now I have quite a few boilers that need putting together, just to save space. This opening clip's been on screen for a while, and that's to show just how important it is to clean up the feet of the castings that support the boiler. This part of the boiler that bolts to the baseboard needs to be very flat. If it isn't, and you tighten it up, it's very easy to crack the mountings. These boiler mounting castings are different to any of the other ones I've ever seen. The early 504 boilers didn't have any baseboard mountings casting at all. Later models had the rounded feet casting with slots in them. In the numerous dismantled boilers that I received from the customer, one of them is a brand new Stuart Models reissue of the 504 boiler and it's slightly different. And the fact that this one has holes in the feet instead of slots or no feet at all makes me think that these boiler plates are the new ones. These are not the new side panels. They're safely in a box on the shelf and they're unpainted. The reason I'm doing it this way is so I can assemble a boiler without using the boiler that's completely pristine on the shelf. Now I've cleaned up these cast iron parts and fitting them together to hold one of the other 504 boilers as a test. This side panel has some pieces of sellotape stuck to it. I will remove this in the fullness of time before I finish the boiler. The new castings have cleaned up very well and they are slightly different to the older ones, probably better. There's a bit more work to do on these castings yet. I'll be using some 100 grit emery cloth to flatten off the castings and round the edges. I'll be showing that in the How to Build a Stuart Model Steam Plant series when I come round to the painting. This is most important. A 504 boiler was designed to have a piece of asbestos between the side panel and the front and rear cast iron parts. When doing a dry run like this, you must not tighten the bolts. Otherwise you will bend and distort the side panels in this area. Now you can see that I've changed the front and rear mountings for a pair that are painted and finished. I'm assembling this boiler using steel machine screws, not the brass ones that it's designed for. I will use the brass dome head bolts that are provided when I finally build the proper boiler. By proper, I mean the brand new one. This is quite a good 504 boiler with an absolute minimum of marks on it. I don't like this piece of brass sticking out of the boiler bush at the top of the boiler, so I'm removing it using a pair of pliers, after which I will put it in the bin. I like the threaded part to be on the fitting, not on the boiler. Most of the time with Stuart boilers, there is a stainless steel insert, which in turn fits into the steam tap that's then screwed into the bush on the top of the boiler as shown here. I do like Stuart siphons, they're very robust. Some modern siphons are too thin. They break easily and they can allow the pressure gauge to vibrate, especially in a model steam locomotive. And as you can clearly see with this siphon, apart from the fact that it's bent slightly, it's really robust and strong. You have an option which way round you fit the siphon. I generally fit them so that the pressure gauge is in the centre of the boiler. If the pressure gauge is stuck out to the side like it would be if I turned the siphon round, then it's very easily damaged. In this clip, I'm fitting a check valve. This is not a Stuart check valve. This is one from my friend Chris at CME Engineering. That's why it has a C stamped on it. This check valve will do the job perfectly. Now it's time to look at a water gauge. Over the years, many types of water gauges have been fitted to Stuart boilers. This is just one of the types. I prefer the cast ones from an appearance point of view, but this should be okay. All I need to do is fit a drain tap at the bottom to blow down the water gauge. I've mentioned it many times, I do not personally like Stuart pressure gauges, but really with a Stuart boiler you have to fit them. They make a horrible noise when they blow off. Or oh, before they blow off, they just sit there making a really weird whining noise. Because I have plenty of these Stuart safety valves, I'm definitely going to use them on these boilers. If I pull the camera back, as you can see, they just look dead right. The subject of Stuart 504 boilers in this video, and the series Building a Stuart Model Steam Plant, is really going to be well covered. From my point of view at the moment, Assembling the boilers is very necessary just to stop them taking up so much space in my workshop. 
also to alleviate the danger of the parts falling off the shelf down onto the floor and getting broken. Apart from some chimneys, a 501 boiler, and of course the brand new Stuart boiler, I'm now beginning to get the space that I desperately need in the workshop back. Here are the cast iron mountings that are cleaned up in this episode, on top of the box containing the side panels and the heat insulation material. I think I need a day off, so tomorrow I'm going to go metal detecting with a friend of mine. I'll probably end up videoing that too. That's it for this episode. I'd just like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.